I love that this orange is just a little bit brighter, so it just... Yeah, just lifts it. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't want to be any darker, did it? I don't think so. I think it would have disappeared. We haven't written anything up for these, have we? It's just No, it's just a certain suggestion. I'll explain. Just a central piece, sash, 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 yeah. border, done. It was a really lovely meal last night. Yeah, it was a good one. Are we alive? Oh, we are alive. Yeah, Josh sent oh. a live message. Did he? Oh, miss that. We were just discussing <laughs> dinner last night. Having have a lovely time. time. Yeah. <laughs> we're just standing <laughs> looking at each other going, going any <laughs> minute now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so curry and cake happened yesterday. We're out of cake now. Yes. So I've got some of the sweets that went in the... I'm just doing myself up. <laughs> Um, how are you, Jane? Really well, thank you. Excellent. How yes, are you? Good. Are you all right at home? Good um, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Witchy Stitchy Wednesday, um, Workshop Wednesday, whatever you want to call it Wednesday. Yeah. Let's have it fun has Wednesday. numerous <laughs> names, doesn't it? Yeah. It's fair to say. Now, behind us, you can see this particular stunner. Um, and here's how the story goes. <laughs> There's always a story. There's always one. Um, obviously, we love the K Facet Collective, so we have all the fabrics no lie there yeah. um and then the jane sassaman collection came in yes and it caught our right now last week we had that gorgeous great big sassy squares quilt that jane did um but then this week i'd just done a show on the craft store with a wavy ruler brand new from creative grids we're going to have a look at it and so when this fabric came in I was like, oh, 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 yes, that well, that work. needs to go with the ruler. And this is how these these ideas just it start just to evolved, tumble. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And these were some of the fabrics that hadn't been used out of last week's collection. Yeah. So we're like, hang on a minute. If we put a few little planes with there, and then obviously I went rifling through the cave because I wanted to use this Philip Jacobs here. Um, it is bold, it is bright, it is impactful, and sometimes people don't know how to use it because it is big, bold, and bright. That's right, With yeah. greens and purples and oranges, but I absolutely love it. So when we got greens and purples and oranges from another collection, I'm like, do you know what? This is what we do so well, I think, yes, is to we combine. Can, yeah. Because we can. We've got the space to lay everything out, to pull everything off the shelves and go, right, what's going to go here? What's going to go here? What's going to go here? And one of the thing I love in Cave's books is when he does really simple quilts that are just a big centre and then sashed, sashed, sashed. And that's all this is. But with the wavy border. And that is what just frames this. It makes just, it look... Yeah, it gives it a, a nice, unusual finish. It's it? like a very expensive painting. Yes. You know, when they have the squirrely, like, squirrely, yeah, squirrely, whirly bits. Yeah. Um, and that's what it feels like for me. This will hang on the wall. And when we are done with this here, this will go in the warehouse on yes. the wall because I just love it. I think it's fabulous. Now, if you are after something a little tamer... We have other bundles for you. And again, um, we've gone through our fabrics, we've picked from different collections, and this is the joy of having a large, <coughs> large stash yes. out there, is that we can do this for you, absolutely do this for you. Then we've also got the new, um, ah, ba, 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 ba. Alaska. Alaska, I was going, Arkansas? No, that's not right, Alaska ruler. I should know because I have demoed it on the yes. craft store as well. Um, and actually that's one of the blocks I did on the craft store. We've made it up into a cushion. And we've got some really, really beautiful bundles for you today. If you want to have a go at a cushion um, and, or any of your Creative Grids rulers, like when have you actually gone through and used them and just created maybe some new cushions? Um, it's yeah. up to you. So we've got kits to look at for this. We've got kits to look at for that with a little flange binding. Um, <laughs> Can't be said any other way. Yeah, can it? And of course, <laughs> we've also got our half meter heavens, which will go live tomorrow night. Should we say hello to everybody? Let's do because that. Because I've talked a lot already. 
Let's find out who's with us. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Let's get rid of that. Uh, we have got Janice and Judy. Oh, the J's this morning. I don't want to celebrate New Year's. God, you just stop flashing things at me. Morning, Karen. Morning, ladies. What a day yesterday was. Just need to wait for the goodies to arrive. That's the hardest bit, waiting for it to arrive. Yes, so on that note, Karen, would now be the time to tell you that I've just ordered all the velvets as well. Maybe I shouldn't. We've done it that. now. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, mention it. Obviously, yeah. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly going to yeah. do it. We love O'Deal's uh, velvets here. That's a given. But just so that you know. Uh, good morning, Sue. That looks stunning. She said, yes, it is. Morning, Rona. Good morning, Pam. Um, again, stunning quilt. Um, looking forward. Oh, let's see what's what was. To uh, Jane's demo, says Myra. And Elizabeth says, morning, Myra. Better today? Yes, but a bit tired. So, you know. There's all the chats going on. Yeah, it's just it's a bit of a beautiful thing. Um, and then Maureen. Good morning. Well, actually, good evening for Maureen, isn't it? I'm excited to see Jane make tonight. I love that quilt. It's stunning. Yes, absolutely. Um, Lisa Chandler is sitting eating ice cream, waiting for us. All right. Yeah. Well, actually, Happy now Australia I've got her day. designing some kits. It? It's for Australia us. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and Leanne says, "Good morning, ladies. I'm on the floor." I mean, fair enough. Oh, cutting up tulip pink, <laughs> making a lovely tote bag I for was myself. Say, is there someone there to help you up? I was a bit worried then. <laughs> <laughs> you do get to that stage, <laughs> so, don't you? Yeah. It's like a two-man job yeah. getting up off the floor. It's not like getting down; it's getting back up again. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's sitting cross-legged. I used to be able to sit cross-legged for hours yeah. and hours and hours. I used to sit um, with my legs under me. Oh, I've never been able to do that. It's always hurt my yeah. knees. So I used to do that a lot, but now, well, I can't no. get my legs under me. So. Morning, Alison. <laughs> it's Annie F this morning. She says, morning, Natasha, Jane and everyone. Hopefully I'll get peace to watch this morning's show. Lovely project this morning. And Syl Sparkly says, morning, gorgeous peeps. Got to go into the office this morning. Rude. Boo. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, and Susan Moore's watching. And so is Steph. Morning, all. So is Claire. May I ask, how many bolts of fabric are in your stash? Board Park figure. Mm. Rather not say. I don't know if I could even. <laughs> no, there's a lot. There is a lot because we've got the full cave collection. Never mind all the other collections we've have. There's a lot. Yeah, there's it might not be a good idea to actually count them, no. which we will have to do soon for stock take, of course. Yeah. But yeah, I like to think of it as a fabric library. Yes. Mm. Morning, Yvonne. She's morning, both beautiful fabric. So sure is. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Jane. Morning, Jojo. Uh, morning, Vicky. Morning. Slightly late as my mum was trying to persuade me to get a puppy. Um, so, Vicky, what I would say to you is if you wait about 63 days, uh, <laughs> Maud might make that dream come true. How do you feel about a, uh, a risotto, as I'm now going to call oh, it? Oh, the risotto. A risotto. You have to be careful you don't call it a risotto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can get um, uh, visipoos. Visipoos. Mm. Which are the visipoo with a poodle. Yeah. So I think a, a risotto. A risotto. Sounds quite... Uh, no, she's got to go to the vet to have all that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, hi from Gloucestershire. Lovely fabrics. Says, says Caroline. And morning, Ben. Um, <laughs> Lisa says it's been so long. It's not been so long. I was talking to you about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, morning, Lo. <laughs> she's still working. How very, very dare they. I know, but I do have a beautiful ring, so thank you very much for that. Uh, morning from an overcast Suffolk, says Kate. Um, Claire has a new large table. Uh, much less crawling on the floor, cutting out dresses. I seem to believe that your husband did not love the table. What about just spinning it around 90 degrees? Yeah. Would it fit in there? Yeah. You could have one either end and two at the side then. Yeah. Rather than Absolutely. Morning, Ali B. How are you, my love? Um, right. Okay. Carol says, morning, NM team. Love the wavy border, but never be able to do that. No, 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 no you will. Because Creative you Grids will. have created something so that you can. That's exactly why. Because people look at that and go, <gasps> I can't. Yes, you can. You Even can. I could. You Even can. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's a brilliant piece of rulery template creative grids amazing wizardry yeah wizardry let me tell you um, i'm also going to show you now these right this we're back on track with the old half meter heavens being the very last of the bolts yes so let's have a little a little looksy looksy these go live at midnight we've had some people saying well wh why where are they where are they on the website well they're, they're like last week's on the website and a few others but Okay, this is the Lewis and Iron with the sparkly, sparkly moon. Emily keeps telling me that the moon is glow in the dark. But this also comes from the child that this morning said to me, Mummy, is this a rock or a tiny meteor? She's three. 
God help me. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've put that with peach, which Beautiful. I think is rather lovely. Um, I have lovely. got... Is that the Enchanted collection? Yeah, it's the Enchanted Beautiful. Lewis and Iron collection. Um, and then, I'm not going to lie, I've got five Dinky Donkeys left. And if we you don't the buy them, donkey. I'm going to have to make something for my mum because I have her de I have her de uh, her Gert and Daisy. I have her donkeys, who are basically those colours. Oh, and another donkey. That I've got two. Please hope so. Um, <laughs> sorry, mum. Love love the donkeys. They're great. Apart from the fact, my mum's probably just gone cold all over with the vision of me coming home with a donkey in the car to put in one of her paddocks. Gertie. <laughs> got stuck in a hay feeder last week oh no no it wasn't last week. it was it was on my s penultimate day of my seven day water fast mm. when i had zero energy so trying to lift a donkey <laughs> out of a water feeder oh my of, a, God. of a hay feeder was not my idea no. of fun i'm now gertie's favorite person in the whole wide world because i rescued her rescued her Blinking donkey less donkeys 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 um but talking of donkeys we're going to show you um how to make some that don't get stuck in hay feeders uh, on Friday for our pay it forward. So it's oh, our lovely. guest designer takeover on Friday, but our guest designer got a bit delayed. So Gemma and I are going to double do. Oh, um, how lovely. She's going to do the fun. donkeys and I'm going to do the syringe drivers, which are our new pay it forward project. There we go. Amazing. All sorted. Well, this is fun. the very last of the Adita Sitar. And again, this one as well, I've only got, I know, but look how beautifully they go together. Oh, gorgeous. Ooh, I've only got two of those. And not much more of that, to be honest. Uh, unicorns on pink. Oh, gosh, what did Emily choose this for the other day? She wanted this for something. She's going to be gutted. I'm just about to sell the last of it. She wanted wings. Oh, yeah, she, she wanted wings. That's it. She pulled these out because she wanted me to make her wings, as you do. I thought, and actually, this is the last of the Liberty as well. Nice. Of the feathery one. Okay. It's not actually called feather. It's called Mary something. Mary Catherine. And look at the Hawaiian blue. Just is works. just the one. Matches um, it perfectly. I have got one fungi in midnight. Nice. Love the fungi. I have got three of the fungi in teal, and I've put it with a darker teal for you today, just because I think tonally that works. But then you see, I've put the fungi in smoky blue with a chambray just to lighten it and brighten it. But again, I've got like two of those. Um, I've got two of these as well, which is the enchanted with cadet blue nice cadet blue look at the moon the sparkly metallic moon gorgeous that's today's going on tonight well, so if much that makes a match in there it's stunning it really is but just don't tell emily for goodness sakes she'll, she'll be so out. mad at me she won't find out well, no, she will find <laughs> she out will. she'll know <laughs> she'll know mind you she might be too busy discussing meteors how does a three-year-old know what a meteor is i mean is it a rock or a tiny meteor i mean what's that all about i don't know that's a that's a, you know when you when you it could be something to do with having an older brother who's into paleontology maybe 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 a bit too much National Geographic could be maybe I didn't like to tell her that we're I all made up of stardust yeah but I didn't go there yeah, let's just blow I think her that mind, might have blown her her. mind or mine one or other um I'm gonna get out of your way Jane so we okay. can have a look at those right to you You've got your Bye. cup of tea, that's the main thing. I've got my cup of tea, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to shimmy down here. It's, it's quite the assault course. It is. Go over uh, the children, under the, under the look, camera. Over the children, <laughs> under the camera. Oh. And we get there in the we end. We get there, we get there. I could, of course, have just done that so that you could look at the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Why make life easy? That? Why make life easy? Right, so we've got the kits that we've used for um oh crikey hang on my seat's gone down <laughs> the gas has gone. Gas has gone out of your chair <laughs> well, well the went alaska to yesterday that's the only ruler. gas that's gone <laughs> sorry very crude that's the alaska ruler um from adita sitar has helped design this ruler now jane when i demoed this on uh, the castle this was the one that i made wasn't it is this one yes, this, yes is this is one the one made, that i yeah. made um and um I'm going to be entirely honest. I looked at the ruler. I just read a book called um, Eat Your Frog. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, <laughs> which inspired me here. Yeah. So the concept of eat your frog is go with the biggest, most difficult task first, get that done. So eat the frog and yes. then the rest of the day is easy. Yeah. So I looked at the ruler and I found the most complex thing that it does because this ruler does a lot. It does. It does an awful lot. So I yeah. went with the most complex that showed off Mo the most number of attributes that yes. it does and I did that and this is this is it so um, this is my frog cushion yes and it's not difficult is no, it? it really wasn't it really wasn't you, know, you, you look at that and you think oh my goodness there's but loads I did it. of piecing and all of that but this well it's a creative grids ruler and we know that creative grids designed by quilters for quilters yeah. make things straightforward and simple for you and you can't go wrong no, nope. it's all worked out for you. It's perfect. So what we did was work out the kits. So we for came you. up with a little four cut, four fat, four fat quarter bundle. Gosh, that's difficult to say. Four quack, fat quarter bundle. <laughs> four quack quarter. Um, and we put a little bit. Was we had a little bit of narrow flanged binding come into the warehouse into the fold. So it just happened to be like the cranberry red colour and the beige. So we've chucked a little bit of that in there in the kit for you as well. well just, doesn't that just make the difference? It just frames the block and then you can add a border to it. I think if you try to use this as piping, it's a little too narrow and it may disappear into the edge. But you know, you could, you might just want to just do that in the bind, in the in the edge of your cushion top. Now the fat quarters, you're probably going to get two blocks out of the fat quarters maybe three so you could maybe make a runner you'll definitely get cushion fronts and if you wanted backing you could either order um, more meterage or we've put a nice little um, planes bundle together for you that would work as sashing between your blocks or borders or backings for your cushions so we've got the cardinal, the beige, and the ivory there, which just blend beautifully with the four, with the three bundles. So that's a separate little bundle that we put together this morning, just so that you've got extra fabric if you wanted to to complement your fat quarter bundles. So it's Moda fabric, part of the creams and cranberry range. We've got Gemma's named these. So this is sugar cranberry paisley four paisley prints red tone on tone cream tone on tone red and cream and then the beige and cream which are beautiful all paisleys beautiful motor colors all go together now this because the four the three bundles are from the same collection they all complement each other as well they sure do so you know you could get all three and make a quilt yeah Oh, they do, and it just works in absolute treat. Yeah. Um, the other thing to say, I know that a lot of you um, wait until a Wednesday to buy kits from like Monday and Tuesday. Can I please just give you a heads up that anything left over from Monday's show is going on Hochanda at the weekend, sorry, the craft store. So I need to take that stock down after lunch. Right. So if you haven't got your order in and you wanted the velvet bundles that we had on Monday's show, Please, 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 please just get your order in now because otherwise they'll be gone and you'll have to get them off the craft store on Sunday. I've got a Sunday show this week, Jane, just in case, you, you know. Sunday? Yeah, yeah, just in case, you know, Monday to Friday wasn't enough. Yeah, you know. And you're working, <laughs> and you're working, and you're working on Friday here as well. Yeah, we do love a so Gem's good show called, week. So Gemma's called this one Cranberry and Cinnamon Floral. So you've got some, again, red on red, the beautiful floor large floral and two medium scale florals again they're going to complement each other beautifully with a bit of, of the um, red flange piping the narrow flange is in here if you wanted the larger flange that we do then you will need to order, order that separately by the meter is it by the meter or by the half meter i think we sell it by the half meter don't we it's by the meter oh, the what sorry the, the larger flange the wider flange it's by the meter yeah, by the yeah, meter yeah. Yeah, and so if you love these colours, the red is raspberry. Yes. And uh, that one, I think, is taupe. Is taupe, isn't it? Yeah. Taupe, taupe, taupe. Potato, potato. No one calls it potato, it's tomato, tomato. tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do say 
say in the song? Do they? Potato, potato, let's call oh, the whole thing off. there you yes. go. That, they probably, let's call the whole thing off because they probably realise how ridiculous it was. Um, and then we've good. got the cocoa and sugar, which are these lovely oh, nice. beiges, which give a lovely, calm, neutral, um, classic finish, I think, that will go anywhere in any room. But as I say, the four, the three bundles together are from the same collection of the cranberries and cream, so you could buy all three and, you've and got live happily ever after. Yeah, there's morning, a quilt, there's morning, a quilt going on there. Yeah. Right, so the Alaska Ruler, designed by Edita Sitar, has a QR code on, keep these instructions. These are instructions. It's not just a label to tell you what the ruler is. Oh you, no, that, that you is your go-to. You have got yeah. a lot of information on here that is going to make your life so much easier. It tells you here what size strip you need to cut for the Alaska block, which is this one here. This is the Alaska block. Um, so you've got all your pieces there. If you wanted to just do a basic kaleidoscope block, which is this one here, it tells you the size of your large triangle. Oh, is it that goes, the one I did? It goes from nine to 16 so you can do a nine inch block which comes out at that size amazing and then the 16 inch block which comes out at that size do you know what jane you could easily make a sampler quilt out of this couldn't one you ruler, just just you? have a play with your ruler and yeah. make lots of different box i had a go at a couple of the different ones to see what i could how it would look this is done with two strips of fabric that's slightly smaller than that one and that one's done with two strips and then you turn the ruler the other way. So um, for this one, I started out with two, two and a half inch strips. You can see that there. Use the ruler at an angle. And because you've got these measurements on here, you've got quarter inches divided up. You can't really see it on camera because it's a white line, but you can line that two and a quarter inch up with your ruler there cut that and you've got your your block going you've got your ruler that's not working <laughs> you've words, got your, words you've got your triangle going there if you slide it down to the size that you want against your point so for this one this is a nine inch block so you want a five inch you want a five inch triangle you would slide it down she's forgotten already how she did it it's on the other page, it's on the first page. Yeah. So all the information is here, on here. So for the sliding it across, you slide it across there. So your point of your triangle is here. So you know then to cut up there and across there, and then you'll turn your ruler around and you'll line up your five inch there and you cut along there which gives you your triangle so if I want the five inch strip I've got the five inch line there I think I did these four actually I did them five or four come on Jane get yourself together four so that's the four inch mark there up there just take the, the top off and then take it back this way, line that up with the five on there. Oh, I'm not making this look very easy, am I? On there, that's it, that side. Just make sure you get your ruler around the right way so that you don't cut over yourself. And use that to cut across there and that ends up with your piece that you then need to make that shape so that makes that one there and you join those together and you'd have a triangle at the end and you get the reverse as well from the triangles that are left over yeah because you can do there are there are different ways aren't there yes. with this of doing uh, your triangles because um on the instructions it shows you how to use the tip of it to do a different size triangle so there are lots yes, and lots, there's of, different lots of different ways you could even make your kaleidoscope so that you cut, you can cut it that way, but you could also cut it along that way. So you could cut up there and down there and then cut across and you would have 
a stripey kaleidoscope, which again will give you a different pattern. You've got so many options. Oh gosh, I hadn't thought of doing it like that. So many options that yeah. can give you so many different effects. And if you use the stripey fabric as well, you could get some lovely things going on. You'd have all sorts going on, wouldn't so, you? So yeah, you can, there's 10 different blocks that Adita has designed on the bottom of here. There's even a Christmas tree in a basket. If you go, um, you, you can have a, Should we have a look at those closely? Because yeah. um, let's have a little closer to close. There we go. So you can go onto the Creative Groups website, find the um, Alaska ruler, and click on the link there that takes you through to the um, demonstration that Adita herself is giving you, which is lovely because she's got the most amazing accent and it's really lovely to listen to her. Did we ever decide where she was from? I don't know actually, but from her accent, I'm, I'm sure it's a Scandinavian country somewhere. And then you've also got the QR code. So if you've got a QR reader on your phone, you can scan that and it will take you straight to the demonstration as well. Perfect. So that's, that's a really handy. So these instructions are really, you know, we um, clip ours to the, to the side of our ruler. So they're always with the ruler. So, you know, keep them together. It's, it's quite important that you do that. So I'm going to demonstrate the um, Alaska cut quickly and succinctly and hopefully better than I just did that one with the twisty lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, so going by the instructions, I'm doing a 10 inch, a 12 inch block. So I'm following these strips here. Now I don't need a... Um, and which block are we actually making? We're going to make the Alaska one. Okay. So that we can see how how it looks. It's going to be slightly smaller than that because this one is the 16. This one is the 16. So ours is just going to be slightly smaller. Um, the block that I use for the cushion is a 10 inch, 10, 10 inch finished. So that one there. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Which one? Making that one. backwards and forwards. So sorry. that one is a 10 inch. Uh -huh. So that's got a board around it. You can see this is the nine inch which is the smallest size that it does. So you could get a cushion out of that as well, or you could put four of those together. And so I thought, well, I'll do the 12 inch and then we've got the three, the four different sizes then as demonstrated. Beautiful. So following the charts from um, the instructions, we're going to need the two colors for the diamonds, the two strips there for the diamonds, and two strips from the, for the um, side triangles, which go into the unit there. And then you need squares for the um, corners. So it's an eight, it's an eight pointed star and it's done, you do it in segments and then you make the two segments together to make a quarter, but it's not a, a traditional quarter, it's sort right. of offset, isn't it? So okay. you get, it looks a bit wonky when you first start doing it. All the instructions are on the street, the sheet as to how to place your ruler to get your, your strips and everything. It's very straightforward and easy to follow. So for your um, side triangles, you're going to need two per diamond. So you're going to need a total of eight. And you place the ruler on your strip to the same depth as you've cut your strip. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the um, triangle that you need. Just thinking they're the same, yeah they are. You'll cut one on your, on your side, whether you're right or left-handed depends on which side you have your ruler. Turn it around and the beauty of this is that you can place your ruler up and then down. And of course it's got all the traditional features of the um, creative grid, the non-slip, the marks to show you exactly where you need to be. You've got your quarter inch mark on here, your half inch mark, all of those. So you'll work your way down the strip and you're cutting two at a time because I've got my strip folded over. So I know I've got enough there for one diamond. I've got two, two pieces for one diamond. And you'll work your way down depending on how many blocks you want to make and how many strips you need. And then you'll do the same with your other strip mm -hmm. um, so that you've got the corresponding because you have a like a light and a dark yeah 
or a plain a patterned, whichever way you want to do it. But you need to have a contrast between the diamonds and then you have a different or the opposite for the side triangles. And you'll work your way down and you'll get your pieces that you need for the, for the side, your side triangles as it were. Then you take your strip for your diamonds and again you place your ruler on to get that initial cut and we're going across that way so mm -hmm. we're going to cut up there I'm going to take the end off and this again the creative grids are designed so that you get minimal tails on your when you're putting your blocks together and because I've got um, on the instructions it is a two and three quarter inch strip I'm going to place my lines here now again you probably can't see it because they're white but you've got Chris um, if I put some red fabric behind it and we go close up oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got crosses on here that just denote where the diamonds will meet so they're at the quarter inch mark You've got dark lines to show the half inches. A dashed line is the half and a solid is the inch. And then you've got these little white crisscrosses on here that denote the quarter inch. So it's very easy to follow. And so I'm placing my three quarters mark, which is here, along that line there and bringing it down so it's along the bottom line. So I've got my right size diamond for the block that I'm making and again just go straight up and across there and then take the little and again you can cut two at a time so that diamond will go in that space there and then we'll do the same with the darker colour that we're using So lining it up with the top of this strip, just taking those, you end up with lots of little triangles all over the place, you usually end up on the floor. You really can't do very much with those, honestly, you can't. <laughs> it um, just although, is how it is. Although there is um, a, t a form of patchwork called confetti quilting, so you could save them if you wanted to have a go at oh, lovely. confetti quilting. Um, you make like a cover in net and then you fill it with all the little tiny scraps of fabric so it's like inside a sack that's see-through. Oh wow, that's very clever. It gives some really lovely effects. So then you've got your diamond there that will do that one. And so you're going to need four like that and four like that so you've got your contrast. Your square, you can again you can use your ruler for the ten and a half inch block. I need a four and a half inch strip cut into a four and a half inch square. Excuse me. Anybody think I had curry for tea? <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. It was delicious. So four and a half is on here, so I can cut that strip now into a four and a half inch square. And then I can use my, um, I'll have to use my ordinary creative grid ruler to just cut that in half across the diagonal. And again, when you want to do that, you've got your 45 degree line here that you can line your ruler up on the edge of your square to be sure that you're exactly in the right place to cut across. And you will cut, again, you can cut two squares at a time. You only need four of these triangles and they will go, if you want to do it in a paler colour, they go over the dark triangles, or if you want to do it in a darker colour, they go over the light triangles. You can decide which way round you want to do that. So you've cut everything quite quickly there to make your um, block. <clears throat> you just need to then take your diamond and the two triangles, and you're going to sew your diamond, your triangles, to the side of your diamond. And again, you've got all the markers on these because you've cut them now. You need to offset it slightly because of your quarter inch seam. So how I looked at it was, if I place my triangle so that the edge, the, the point at the bottom of the triangle here, lining up the edge to edge, 
is against the diamond at the bottom, when you sew it, it will line up this way. And just, it looks a bit odd because the temptation is that you want to put it like that because it lines up perfectly. But if you do that, you end up with a different shape completely. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. I whizzed those through and was really pleased with myself and then I went, oh no, I'm sewing them all on the wrong way. <laughs> So it does say in the instructions a scant quarter of an inch. Yes. Um, I would, I, I query this because. Jane, yeah, I used a full quarter inch. On yeah, the and the reason that I do that is because of our pressing mats. Yes. If I was using a normal, a normal iron, um, a normal ironing board, which is squidgy, then I would say yeah, go scant. Yeah. But because we use our woolen pressing mats and because they are so accurate, I always go full quarter of an inch yeah, because we get a very defined we get a really crisp edge so you know you will know your your stuff yes um you will you'll know, know your, your machine and you'll know if you some machines automatically when you set them to the quarter inch it's a scant quarter inch anyway yeah 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 so you know your machine and you'll know whether it's your quarter inch foot or whether you're going by the guides on your plate or whatever you'll know where your quarter inch is and you'll be used to whether it's a and if you're unsure, you know, get some calico or something like that and just make a, a mock it. A, a mock it. A mock block. A mock block just to start with. Just so that you're not, you know, you're not um you can you can suss it out for yourself then as to where you need to be on um on your seams and all of that. So you get that triangle now. Now you've got your you can trim this um using the tool. Let me just look at the instructions because I just have to remember which part of it is it is that you use. Do you know, this is the thing, isn't it? When you <coughs> use it, it's great. And then um, you go away and do something else or sleep yes. or something. And, and it all goes out of your head. And that's why you don't throw away the instructions. Well, they give you so much information, yeah. so much additional information that is really handy. So you need to have a quarter of an inch here for your seam allowance because you don't want to lose the point of the triangle. But you've got your quarter of an inch mark and, and as the creative grids with all of them, it's frosted for a quarter of an inch as well. So that's an easy see, easy visual to see. Yeah. You can line your um, block up so that the quarter, it's white dashed on here. Again, it's not easiest to see it visually on camera. But you line that up so that your dashed line is just on the top of that point there. And you've got these... Um, lines on your ruler here which will sit in the seam of your diamond so you know that you've got that straight to the top and you'll just trim off that it's just really trimming off those little tails there but you might have like on mine a little extra bit that just needs trimming off to make it straight and i'm just going to do the same with the other the other two here to show you how to get the quarter together I'm just finger pressing mine for quickness, but I really would recommend that you take it to the iron and press it flat because it's going to give you a better seam to sew across when you put in the next triangle onto the other side and it gives you better accuracy. Perfect. It, yeah, it, it really does. And that's the thing. I mean, what we do on air because of time can be very different to. Yeah, I what mean, you when you're doing do it at, at home, home and you've got. You know, you can take your time and you can do a couple of blocks and put it away and take something else out and do something else. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not like you have to whiz it. It makes it really lovely and quick. It's a beautiful ruler to use because it makes what would be um, quite a complicated block quite simply. Yeah. Again, this is the beauty of the creative grids, isn't it? It just makes life easier. That's what we love certainly um, that's the beauty of them I think more than anything else so again I'm going to just trim that making sure that the quarter of an inch is at the top of the diamond there and I've gone quite scant with those so I've got quite a large amount to trim off there but that's okay 
it's better to trim it off than not have enough that's what I always think yeah and so I'm going to place my triangle now on because I've gone with the darker colour for the contrast in the corners you might want to do the reverse and you might want to have a pale fabric in which case you'll put it on the darker triangles I'm going to place this triangle on top of there. And that's why we chose the kits as we did, so that you've got the contrast yeah, in tones. You, can, you could make two in, a, in the opposite way, so that you'd have a nice combination if you made four of those. Yeah. You'd certainly get nine inch blocks out of the fat well, Jane, quarters. Well, Jane, just, if you just show that cushion behind you yeah. and the, the, big, the other big block that I'd done. Yeah, you can um, see the contrast, the table, can't you? Uh, they were made out of... So these two were made out of one lot of fat quarters. Yeah, one and fat, I bet you had, fat quarter you had quite a, probably quite a bit yeah, left over, yeah. didn't you, as well? I did. And, but again, you know, with a cushion like that, it's so obviously got a front. Yes. It doesn't need to have a really swanky back. So no. what we've done is put up on the website um, a planes coordinating bundle yes. with... In fact, I don't know where we put yeah. it. I did have it. Here it is. So if you want, um, if you don't want to waste your swanky swanky fabric, there then go. we've got planes so that you can do your backing. And this for your one cushions. I've piped with the um, raspberry, the raspberry full size. I'm going to say yeah, rather than the yeah. narrow full size flange, full size flange, <laughs> which gives a beautiful frame to it, as you can see there. And I quilted this one. Um, just put a bit of wadding on the back and quilted through very simply. Just echo quilted it in the diamond shape. Um, I didn't do anything in the corners. Oh, I did, I lie. I, I just um, did in the ditch on the corners. But that's just, I feel, is enough just to enhance it. But you could really practice your free motion on there. You could do all squirrelies and filling in and all sorts of things. It's a nice um, project to have to practice on for your free motion. Um, yeah, so that's where we are. We put the triangle on and I like to, I've just lost my triangle. Where's that gone? It's on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, fold it in half to find the middle of the triangle. Just give it a little finger press to get a crease in there. And then I can line that crease up with the point of the diamond, just so that I know that it's in the middle. And that way you've got e you should have equal amounts either side. So we just sew that to the top of that triangle that we've just created. Oh, we've got Denise and Anne and Katie and Linda have joined us as well. Hello, everybody. And Elizabeth has made the hydrangea. She, um, she made a hydrangea birthday card using the confetti pieces. She's is fun. It just makes it quite satisfying, because particularly if you've got those little bits of scrap that you don't yeah. want to get rid of. Oh, and Dawn and Donna are here as well. <laughs> I've got my, my vow. I've got Denise, Dawn and Donna are all watching all the D's today. All the D's. All the D's. So press that triangle up and away from your triangle that you've created with the two small triangles and the diamond shape. And again, you've got the trim tool on here. So you can line up on the edge there. Um, let me just check on this. Get yeah, you're lining up with... That's, there's a dashed line, quarter of an inch line, and then there's a solid line. So you line that up with your seam and you're just trimming off that part there. And there shouldn't be very much to trim, depending on how you've done your... And you take that and you do it on the other side as well. So lining up your ruler with the edge there and that solid line there you just trim that off and that gives you takes all the ears off and gives you a nice shape to finish perfect and so then you put your light and your dark diamonds you've got one with with your looks like a kite shape with your corner on and then you've got a triangle without a corner on and you're going to put those two together to make a quarter now I like to use um, my pin just to make sure I'm in the right place there. They should just line up exactly on top of each other because you cut them the same way. But if they don't, just line up your seams, place your pin in through the seam and along the seam 
because that's the point that you need to keep together those are the, those are the seams where visually you'll see that if it's not if they're not together no, I've got it they're yeah, slightly yeah, yeah. out These are just classic, aren't they? And they're the sort of blocks that you look at. I wouldn't even attempt a block like this without a creative grids ruler. I no, just it, wouldn't. It just, it just takes wouldn't all be a of thing. the um, complicated maths out of it. It's straightforward. You've got lines to follow. You've got a grid to follow, so you know which size you're doing. It just makes life very easy. And by making it easy, it makes it quick to me. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then you'll press that open um, to one side. And that gives you a quarter of a block. Perfect. Now, in here somewhere, I have already made. So, as you can see, that doesn't look what we would, like, traditionally we would think of as a quarter. No, no, it's a bit of a funny shape, isn't it, for a quarter? Now, I've done what, I you, what you wouldn't do, is I've made a mirror image. So, um, you would place... Actually, it does look quite nice. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And it looks like a flower now. Yeah. So, you've got your quarters and you're going to put two together. And yeah, I've placed my. I've sewn mine this to the wrong side, so I should have sewn it to the other side. When, when I, you um, make yours, you'll yeah. make sure they're all together. So it would go. I've sewn it completely upside down and back to front, but you will put two together, so they look like that. And again, that's half the block. So when you come to put the other half together, you'll line that up. And I suggest that you press the seam to the dark side on both. And then when you come to line those up, you've got the fact that you can nestle the two seams together. That won't work because it's in the wrong, it's the wrong way completely. That's not how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, when I did this, Jane, I laid everything out. I cut yes, everything together would. and you laid would. everything out and yeah. then systematically went through. You will. And, it's, and, that's, and that's just, it, again, with all of these quilting, it's just that. Yeah, it's, it's working just systematically and just making sure everything is laid out. And when you cut it, you'll cut it all together in one go. Yeah. So you'll have everything and you'll lay it all out and you'll see how it goes. Um, if I've got the corresponding pieces on here, um, I did have them. No, okay, well, we'll leave it for now. Um, you can see how that will look. With your triangle there. And then your other diamond. Beautiful. And you'd have your dark pieces in there. So you'd make two quarters, join them together to make the half, and then you join the two halves together. And I say, as you press the seams towards the dark on the both halves, when you come to join the halves together, you've got those so you can nest the seams there. Makes life a lot easier for everybody. And as I say, you can have really good fun um, playing with the different blocks that you can cr create. Um, all the pieces are there that shows you how to make all of the pieces to make all of those blocks there. And if you go on to the um, video that goes with the ruler, you'll get to see how you do the basket and the other ones as well. So you can have really good fun with that. Beautiful. So that is the Alaska That's ruler. That's the first ruler. Ruler number one. Um, but I would really be tempted to do um, a whole sample quilt. Yeah, you could uh, absolutely. You could have really good fun with that and make make a little sampler quilt using the um, complementary bundle there for sashing in between or adding borders. It would be lovely. So the next set of bundles that we've put together are for making something similar to the quilt behind me. Which is gorgeous, by the way, Jane. It was such fun to do because it, it's, again, it's a fairly quick make because you're just cutting, I cut a rectangle, you could cut a square if you wanted to. I cut a rectangle and then I cut one and a half inch border of the um, orange. 
another border of the of the pattern, same one and a half. I did the same frame borders each time, so it was it's all sort of balanced. But you could make it bigger, wider, whatever you want. Really, that's the beauty of it. So, and, and again, that's when you've got a half meter of these fabrics, it's you, yeah, you yeah, you, you're good to go, aren't you? So we've got the. How big did you start off that centre block as? Um, I think I cut it fourteen by eighteen because I got. A fat quarter. There you go. Perfect. So we put a fat quarter in the bundle of the f of the main fabric. So this is the brocade brocade peony, and then um, we got a long quarter of the um, Macawa spray time orange for that narrow border. And now this piece, I fussy cut to get that top and bottom border in. And what you've got on this piece, you've got it there against the salvage. So you could take that off and then you've still got to do the side borders with the bit in between. Or you might just to choose to cut four strips. And I cut, the one behind me, I cut four and a half inch borders, mm. which is why we put half a metre in. Right. But again, this is just down to personal preference. Yeah. It's I mean, just it's, how much you want it's to It's a serving suggestion, really, more than anything else. And, and you can have fun with that fabric. So that was the next border. And then we went with the um, green chartreuse, because that pulls out the greens in there. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? With the, with the green and, and purple border. And then we put the lavender in because that complements, again, the colours that are in, in the middle block, but also complements the colours in here. And we and really took our time choosing all these colours, didn't yeah. we? We had them all out on the floor. We like, had right, some really good fun. This go? Now, the border fabric, the final border fabric, if you cut this salvage to salvage, you're going to end up with a wavy border that, that goes that way. So I cut mine along the salvage edge. Now you've got three quarters in here, which will do the top and bottom, but you will need to join for the sides. But you've got more than enough fabric to do that. There's plenty in there. So that again is a decision that you can make yourself, whether you want your wave to go vertically or whether you want to go it horizontally and short. So that's, that's an option, but you've got three quarters of a meter of, the bo of what we would consider the, the final board of fabric. Yeah. So that's how that one goes. So that's the brocade peony kit. Beautiful. Then we've got this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're all beautiful. This is a Japanese chrysanthemum blue kit. I heart this. Well, I do you know what? We got a bit carried colours. away, didn't we, Jane? Because it would be fair to say we were only going to do two kits and we've ended up with four. Four, yeah. Because yeah. we've got some beautiful, <laughs> beautiful fabrics. So again, we found a Makawa spray time that, that lifts the the tealy turquoisey greens in there. Can you do me a favour and just open the main, that one out a little bit so we can just see a bit more of what it is that we're actually working with here. Because that is just stunning. That's going to be your centre bit. You can fussy cut, um, make, you could just trim off the salvage and use the, the fat quarter as it is. This is the beauty of a frame quilt. It's decide, you decide what size you want to make it. You decide how wide you want your borders to be and how big it ends up. That's your decision. We've put in a kit that will make one similar size to the one behind us. But, you know, we have all of these fabrics, don't we, by the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the Should do, meter, by the half so. metre. Gemma's probably just gone... Ah! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have, we, that. have we, have we, have we? <laughs> Then we've got a bit of koi polloi in here. Ah, uh, I really love putting, yeah, the koi polloi I think was was needed. So that again has got that little bit of tealy green in there that pulls from both and similar colours that are in the middle panel. Then we went for a bit of peacock to pull out the blues in the koi polloi. Some of the fabrics in the kit mm. um, have been used up in the bundles. Right, okay, so I don't know if you can hear this. has all been tagged and the planes and they're all 
in the collection. So if you need any extra, it's in the collection uh, that we've got up for you. Right, ooh, so ooh, kids. ooh, hello. <laughs> no. There's a bit of paperweights in there. Nice. Paperweight, is it? Yeah, paperweight. Yeah. That's paperweight blue. Again, there's a little bit of that turquoise in there, but it's got the pinks and the blues that are in the middle one. So we're trying to keep the colours in the big borders so that it all flows through, but this, the, the contrast border pulls the colours out, but also pulls it together. And then we've got shark teeth. And you can put these in whatever order you like. Yes. Apart from the shark's teeth. You've the got most, more of so. this. If you want to use either of these for your outside borders, you're just going to have to do a bit more piecing to, to make the borders big enough. There's plenty of fabric. Then we've got a bit of Dorothy. Move that one up slightly. We've got Dorothy there in brown, which has got the most beautiful purple background with oranges and that lovely bright green that again just gorgeous just colors beautiful autumnal colors going on through there the richness and the warmth in there is just, just gorgeous just stunning just lovely and and this is where we have really good fun playing with the colors because we've put lime green next to that which you would never normally think oh, that would look nice with that but it lifts the greens in there yeah it really does then we've got a bit of mini fury Way. Which again pulls those little limey bits yeah, through, doesn't it? But also pulls that orange from the middle as well. You can see how suddenly that orange pops out. Yeah. It's just so clever how the colour does Colour this. works. And we spend hours playing with this. And, and we do this so that you don't have to. Yeah, we call it work. But <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't one tell everyone, So we've got pomegranate now. Nice. Which is in the millifure. But there's also a little, it complements this deep red that's in, in the Dorothy fabric. Then we've got Pebble Mosaic, which has all of the colours in. It does have all the colours, doesn't it? Yeah. We really hit upon a good one there. Yeah, that's really lovely. And it, again, complements the browns and the, and the reds that are in the Dorothy. We then went with, a, we found some purple sp um, spray time. Again, the purple in here purple in here there's even a little bit of sort of lilac -y color in here so it all complements and then we've got the sharp teeth again which brings the oranges and the purples back so it all works there is a reasoning behind it the flow of, of but again as Natasha says you can move that around it doesn't have to be the way that I've suggested and then our final one is shaggy it wasn't me <laughs> um, mine <laughs> Which is beautiful. Russets oh, can and we, yeah, plums let's open this and out. This is just crimson with light with a lovely soft yellow in there. That is just beautiful. It's got a lovely soft duck eggy grey tones in this one as well. Do you know what? The the combination of Philip Jacobs designs with Cave's colour knowledge It's just it's yeah. such a winning combination, isn't it? And it's such a pleasure to work with. It these really fabrics. is. I can't tell you. Now, we went with our duck egg for this, just to calm it slightly for the first frame, mm -hmm. but also it pulls out the beautiful greys. Oh, doesn't it just, yeah. In there. So again, have a think about how you're fussy cutting this yeah. so that you get that, the benefit of that. But then, and this was the beauty, yeah. is the now, next one. The Amaze grey, yeah. this is which is a grey background with the pink. And, and again, you wouldn't necessarily put those two fabrics together. You might be thinking, oh, that's a bit... They go, uh, they yes. go beautifully. They really do. But this duck egg just sort of calms it slightly, but it, pulls all of the colours together. It gives it that breathing space, yeah. doesn't it? And that's, yeah. that's what's needed, is just time to breathe, so that you can... And I. I put up the, the quilt that um, is on the wall, I put that up on the K-Facet Collective um, fan page and the number of people that said it's just lovely to be able to appreciate the big bold prints yeah. and not just have them cut up and that's what you're doing with a wide sashing and that central focus, you're really getting to enjoy yeah. Um, the the artistry that Absolutely. is the K-Facet Collective. Yeah. It, it just complements the prints yeah, so beautifully. Yeah, all its glory. So we've Just put beautiful. a little bit of fuchsia then because we've got a paler pink in here but it works with those colours and again it just lightens it slightly, lifts it 
And then we've got a bit of um, nice. guinea flower. Yeah. Which has got all of the colours in. It's got this lovely lilac-y colour which complements the lilacs and the purples that are in there. Then we went, we had a, a bit of a... I had a bit of a like, oh, do I go karma? Do I go grey? Do I, what do I do here? And I decided to go bold. Mm -hmm. And I went with imperial. It kind of it just gives it a full stop, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it just brings it down. And that's quite um, controversial, if you like, but it's not. Because it's shark's teeth, and that's green and purple, uh, pink. Now, purple is the opposite on the colour wheel to the green. So it Perfect. complements it. It's a complementary colour, and it works really well. And the green and the pink are in this colour in this middle fabric so it's all pulls it together absolutely beautifully I think so we've taken some time and thought about the colours that go together if you don't want to make a frame quilt this is rather a nice bundle to have in your stand. Do you know I was <laughs> just gonna say exactly that it's one they're of those all things beautiful. that they're all stunning bundles yeah. that you can mix and match together. You could make any quilt with these bundles. You absolutely you could. Just could. Take you know, your it bold could just be squares for the centre and make squares and frame them. Oh, you could just have loads of fun it with them. It could just be a patch. It could literally just be squares that you patchwork together and, and that be the end of it, depending on where your level is. Um, but just know that the time and effort to get the colours, to get the contrast, we've but to hang it all together it, you know, is all in there. We've, we've taken our knowledge of colour that we've built up over the years, working with the fabrics that we work with, and we've put that into the bundles for you so that you don't have to worry about whether what fabrics go with what and how you're going to use them. And also working with the designers that we've worked yeah. with. I mean, when I first started Natasha Make, I was in, Natasha Make, so I was incredibly lucky that Brandon was on the end of the phone. And there was many a Sunday afternoon when I was trying to put colour combinations together and I would FaceTime him and he'd help me go through what colours to put where and why and give me all of, it's, all of that you knowledge. Are, yeah, you are really lucky to have that friendship and, um, that you can, you can call on that expertise because that expertise is invaluable. It's, it's absolutely priceless and we are incredibly lucky, incredibly lucky to have that. And, um, and I, I value it massively. Really massively. In fact, I need to ring them after the show. I am um, um, just looking for the ruler to put the instructions back on it with the clip. That's it. So I have made a sample. I've done my frame slightly differently. Um, <gasps> Which one did you go with? <gasps> oh, Jane, I haven't seen this. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a beauty, isn't it? Mm. I did this square slightly smaller. I've done my fra these frames slightly smaller. The one behind us, I did 14 and a half by 18 and a half, I think, and then my frames are four and a half. This one, I think I've done at 10 and a half by 12 because I wanted to really pull just that great big flower there. Gorgeous. And then my borders are three and a half, purely to make it slightly smaller so it was easier to demonstrate with. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, it. It's basically, you cut your middle panel to the size that you want to show off your fat quarter. As I say, if you just want to trim the salvage off and use the whole fat quarter, then that's what you can do. It's your quilt, you can do what you like. I have kept the frames to one inch finish, so cut at one and a half. I put the top and the bottom on and then the sides. If you want to do it the other way around, it's your quilt, you can do it. You know, we all have a nice a, a way that we prefer to work. Some people prefer to put the sides on and then the tops and bottoms. There's no rules, you know, this is just Sometimes showing I off work the, the way fabric. around like you would a log cabin. Yeah, and you can do that. That's but I'm consistent. Yes, whatever you decide, keep yeah. it the same. And again with the borders, I've kept all of the border widths the same and all of the frame sizes the same. But play with your fabric, see what happens if you start narrow and get wider and wider and wider, you'll get a lovely effect. It's entirely up to you. It's your quilt and you can do what you wish with it. And also it depends what you want to do with the leftover bits. Yeah. It might be that you want to make a matching cushion or something. Absolutely. You could use it in your Velas with your Alaska ruler and make a lovely block that goes with the cushion <laughs> that goes with it. I mean, for example. For example. <laughs> so we're going to use the scallop template. Um, again, this now is... Now this is two things, isn't it? It's a template and a ruler. Yes. 
it's called a template because it's not like the traditional rulers for creative grids. It's more used um, in your design process, yes. not so much for measuring. But there are measurements on there that help you work things out. Again, you've got everything you need to know within the instructions that come with it. The lady that's designed it is called Krista Musa. Musa, I think. Krista Musa. She's a lovely lady, and it's lovely watching her demonstration because she's got a nice like a bit great of humour. Yeah, we've we've got a Krista Musa on the uh, <laughs> yes on the, show. <laughs> on the bar this evening. It's looking lovely. Tasty she's delicious. a lovely lady, and she does a lovely demonstration. Um, so you've got everything you need to know. Again, on the instructions, you can go to the um, Creative Grips website, click on the ruler and the, the demonstration is there, or again, you've got the QR code, so you can... You can just search it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to find and straightforward. You start off, you've got this part of your ruler here. So let me put something underneath this that's plain. You've got on here, you've got your curved... I've got the camera, there we go. If I tilt it slightly. This curve here is for your corners, and then you can have different depths. You've got the small, which gives you a, a shallower curve, a shallower curve. And in the instructions, scallop. it, it um, suggests what yeah. size border to use these with as well, so That's that it right. takes all yeah. the guesswork out. It takes out. everything out. You've got the medium size one, and then you've got the deep one, which gives you a, quite a good scallop on there. You've got all your markings on here so you can follow everything. You've got guidelines here for the corners. Everything is there. And again, it's got the traditional um, gripper spots on there to stop it slipping when you're using it. And you've got a good definition of your quarter of an inch around there as well. So it's, it's classic Creative Grids design. Um, it's wonderful. You're going to start off, which is unusual. Now, when I first started doing patchwork, whenever we wanted to do a scalloped border, you had to measure the border, your border, get a strip of fabric, so we would use wallpaper, you know, lining paper, yeah. cut a strip to the same length, and then start working out how many folds you needed to make to get it to fit onto your border. It was such a palaver that I never ever, I made, I did one and then I was like, I'm never doing that again. I've peaked. Yeah. <laughs> such a faff. That face, Jane. Yeah. That face. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a real faff. And so I've avoided scallop borders. And when you first said to me, oh, we've got a scallop border template, I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, then I looked at actually, it. You didn't look that thrilled no. until <laughs> I whipped out the... Uh... And then I watched Lisa, uh, Krista do her demonstration and I was like, oh, wow, that is so easy. <laughs> Much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is all of that. Fantastic. But you do start off by making paper templates, which are easy to do. You've got all the instructions in the um, it even in tells the instructions. You what size tells you to cut what the size, size of the paper the templates. So um, you've got your medium, large, and for your ruler, and you make your corners, and you simply. And I've cut this piece of paper the wrong size already mm -mm. because it tells you on here <laughs> what size to cut. It's like four and a half yeah. by six and a half inches. It's or six, something, four and a half by six, not six and a half. Now, um, I suggest that you either use an old rotary cutter blade for cutting your paper or have a separate rotary cutter for paper, which I do. At home, I've got a, a rotary cutter that's, that's purely for paper because yeah, it's a duller too. blade in it that I'm not going to use on my fabric. So your um, curve st sits on the top of there and you literally draw around it. Now you can draw on there and cut it out with your scissors or you can yes. use your rotary cutter. Or you can, yeah. And I did check and this was fine with a 45mm yes, rotary cutter, that it's worked. Fine. And mm. you, can, you can either mark it and use your paper scissors to cut it out, or if you've got a, a, a designated paper rotary cutter, you can just gently follow that curve round and cut like so. It's easy to do, she says, making it look really hard. <laughs> 
So those are your corners and you're going to need four of those to fit into the corner of your quilt. You fold the corners in half so you get a crease within your paper. You take your quilt and you find the 45 degree angle across there. Now you can either mark it or you can just fold it. So if you fold your quilt along the corners, lining up your edges at the point there and just put a crease in it. You don't yeah. need to do the whole quilt, it's just in that final border really. Away up, John Cole Morgan's awake. Oh, he's just woken up, Jen. Where's he been all morning? I don't know, I don't know. So you'll take your corner template and you'll line the fold in your corner template up with the, corn, with the fold in your quilt at the 45 degree angle. So you've now got that corner exactly where you want it and you need to pin it. Now I would use your quilt, the quilting pins are the longer ones aren't they? Quilting pins are longer. So just place those on the corners and you'll do that on all four corners. So just find in the middle of the template and your 45 degree angle mm -hmm. on your corner of your quilt. Just be careful when you, you are pressing this that you don't pull it because obviously there's a bias there when you do 45 degrees. We've just had a question on YouTube about our iron. Do we sell the iron? Um, and that's from Daydream Believer. Uh, no, we don't, but it is off Amazon. And I think it was about 80 on odd quid. I think actually yeah, Lo managed to get it on a deal day and got it even cheaper than that for about 60. Yeah. But it's worth every penny. It's We've an broken industrial. How many, uh, how many oh, irons now? Too many to, to yeah. think, isn't it? So that's where that one came from. And um, and we've also had a lovely, a lovely message which says, Hi ladies, I'm watching your programmes religiously for about 18 months, but oh. I'm too shy to say hello. I love your demonstrations and your fabrics are divine. NB, Adita Sitar is Polish. Ah. Thank you, Genevieve. Sorry. Perfect. Born a Scandinavian, we, that's terrible. But none of us knew. But now um, we do. Thank you for letting us know. So yeah, you're going to do, whoops, you're going to pin your template to your four corners. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it, to just line everything up. You can line it all up. Just have the pins there, they are, they're hiding. <laughs> so you've got your four corners in. Now, to do the scallops, you take, you take your papers, and I think this is where I got confused because I think these are six and a half, but I could be wrong. No, they are six. I don't know where I've got six and a half from. Maybe it's just because I went, oh, right, width of the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> no, four and a half by six, Gung I think, all of them. As yeah. always, just go for it. Now, I've cut these pieces to the depth of my border, just to make life easier for me. And that is the, the small... I'm going for the small curve. So can you just show us that against your border, that, that yeah, piece of paper that piece absolutely of paper, fits? It's going to be the seam allowance wider because obviously I've got one seam allowance off there. But that's the width. Let's move that up a little bit. That's the width that I cut my borders at. Right. It says in the instructions you don't need to do that. You can have them, you know, they've cut their papers at four and a half it says in the instructions it says it doesn't ne it's not necessary to have um your piece of paper the depth of your border mm. okay so you would take your ruler and lining it up on the edge and the line across there I'm going to cut that again you can mark it with your pencil or you can just go for it with your paper rotary cutter and you will get your you'll get your template cut then so I've put two pieces together I think here well I've actually got three but you'll make several of these you don't need to make hundreds of them you, you can you know six or eight will be plenty because you can reuse them. Yeah. So you get the mirror image then. So put those together and that gives you your 
your scallop. So the next thing you need to do is you need to place these then on the corners. So you start from the corner and work towards the middle and you're going to line up your first scallop so that it lines up with the corner there. It'll overlap and that's okay. Mm. Um, with those corners, Jane, I folded them into quarters because then I found it lined up exactly on that last quarter line. Yeah. Yeah. And that really helped me. M makes it easier for yeah. you. So again, that's oh, how it will be yeah. on there. I'm only going to, I'll do two sides for demonstration purposes, but we'll work it through. So just lining it up. It's a visual thing as well mm. because you can see for yourself how that flows around that corner there. So now you want to take, going through, and you can see there that that really, that gap there, I want to have that going on. And that's fine because you can you can use up to a hot, up to an inch. Krista says on on a, on her thing a gap. You can overlap them. So if I wanted to make it really tight, I could probably get. I couldn't get. Well, I could. I could maybe go in there, but that that's not balanced. That's not going to give me the the flow. Mm. So I'm going to just stretch it out making sure it's the same distance between each one. She says up to an inch will still give you the scallop. Lovely. So doing that, I can just pin those on and I can take my pen, my fabric marker now, and I can just trace that on there. And I will take my line from that corner, just take it straight across. And you probably can't see this very well on camera because it's it's a pencil mark, really. And also you would do this once it had been quilted. You can do the actual marking of the template on the border before you quilt oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, because there's a nice way you can echo quilt, isn't there? Yeah. Once it's marked Because on. you've got the line then to follow, and you know then that you don't have to quilt all this space either. Mm. And that's what I did. I marked it on first, then I yeah. quilted the quilt, and then I trimmed it. So that will do that corner there. So that's the, the top edge, and you would mirror that on the, on the other so opposite side. And then to do your sides, you do the same thing. So you take your templates, and this is why I say you don't need to have lots of templates cut because now I've marked that, I can take those templates off if I wanted to. It's you, just so clever, isn't it? It's, it just takes all the maths out of it, which is just... Joyful. Yes. <laughs> There's no other word for it. Joyful. It it's is. It's just joyful. Because, you know, you can... And it also means that you can do your, it works for any size yes. quilt. Yes. You know, you don't have to think, oh, well, I have to have a border that divides equally into eight because otherwise I can't work out the maths for it. <laughs> we do not like that. We do not approve that. No. No. So again, I can either, over, you can overlap them or you can space them. And again, I think I space this and make sure that they're equal spaces, maybe have that slightly narrower there mm. but have an equal equal gap either side and I would just I make a note of what you've done so yeah. you do the, the same when you do the other one the other. you can measure you can take your ruler measure the gap so that when you come to the other side you can keep it consistent but I think that would work on that side you can take it you can make it shorter as I say Krista recommends that you don't go more than an inch when you overlap on this side mm -hmm. um, you can overlap slightly on, on that scallop there. But you can see that if I try to get another one in there, that's not going to give you my scallop edge. It's no. not going to work. So you've got to make it a bit wider. So I'm going to make it wider. Got it. Nice. But it works for any size, any size quilt. 
you can get your template you know you can move it around you can have it deeper you can have it wider if I wanted to I could bring that down I could say right well actually I don't want that what deeper scallop on there I'm just going to take it down a little bit but if you've got a wider scallop and you want it deeper you would use a deeper you can see the different depths of the curves yeah on the scallop so the wide one's got quite a good um, peak and valley on there whereas the, the one I've used the, sh the small one is quite a gentle it's a gentle soft curve which one did you use on the beautiful one behind you I used the small one again did you yeah I've got a four and a half inch border so I just used the gentle curve on there nice there was a lot of overlapping on those borders on that one it, it overlapped quite a bit on that one so when you've um, when you've done your your quilt you've marked it if you were taking it to long arm quilter they would want it to be straight borders so if you're going to do a scalloped edge do mark it before you send it off to, yeah. the, to the long arm quilter you don't have to because you can mark it you can do the same thing once it's quilted yeah yeah and that's kind of the point i was i was really trying to yeah make, that you know the this is like the last thing that you do before yes. you bind it absolutely and then for cutting it you you use the ruler you take your you'll have the marks i can see the marks on mine you can't see them because it's such a pen it's pencil and it's it's um not easy to see but you can line you've got your marks on here for your corners you've got your 45 degree line there so you can see that that corner is absolutely in the middle and i've got my pencil marks so I'm just going to take that up slightly because I only want to cut the, the very edge of the corner off. And you would do this after you've done the quilting. You would have your piece quilted and then you'll trim it. You'll yeah. quilt it, then trim. And what I would recommend was, once you've quilted it, is to follow your marked line with a line of stitch just to hold your edge together. Even if it's just very slightly inside that marked line. If you've got an overlocker, Jane, could you just overlock yeah. it? overlock it and trim it and that would do it all in one go wouldn't it which yeah. would make your life a lot easier and you use your ruler then to to cut so you'll just follow the line there and then your curved line here now obviously to cut it yourself you want to be sure that you're cutting it in a controlled way and you can flip the ruler over. Now be careful when you do flip it because of course you don't have the non-slip grip. You don't have the non-slip grip. But you can see, I can see my marks on here. So I can follow this and I can go round to there and stop because that's where my mark is and it comes across to there. So I can just line those marks up again. So I went a little bit over there and just follow that round. Perfect. Just take that through. Of course, my rotary cutter now is slightly dull because I've been <laughs> because of the paper. <laughs> yeah. But I can place my ruler upside down again. I would take the pins out maybe. If you want to leave your templates in to help you with the guide, you can still do that. That's fine. But it's really easy to follow. Oh, Barbara. She says, great demos this morning as usual. Watch on YouTube mostly, but missing out on the chat, I realise there's a lot of chat goes on here. Yes, we do chat a lot. Oh, John Cole Morgan says, quarters is a good tip, Natasha. Well, you know, occasionally I'm useful. <laughs> Only occasionally. He does love a creative grid ruler. Who doesn't? I was going to say. And Margaret says she one. likes this, um, the shallow scallop. Um, because you've kept more of your last border. Yes. Yes, um, you get. But, you know, if you've got a really big quilt, you might want a deeper, you might have a deeper border, and so yeah. therefore you'd want a deeper scallop. Uh, yes, of course, Mr. John Cole Morgan, of course you can overlock this. In fact, a lot of, um, a lot of people do overlock their edges, don't they, before yes. they bind? Yeah. Uh, and that, that just gives a really nice, effective finish. So you can see there the scallop that goes on, Fabulous. that's coming on there. Um, and the, this was the other reason, wasn't it, that we chose the shark's teeth? Yeah, because, because it just mirrors echoes that the scallop. Yeah. And I liked it going vertically, but you might want to, to go horizontally to even more 
echo the scallop on it. Morning, Maggie. Lovely of you to join us. So, it's, so you it's, can see that really yeah. makes life a lot easier for you. I haven't cut that properly because I lost my mark, but I can go back and trim that back anyway. But you can get a lovely even, if you don't do it like I did, you can get an <laughs> even <laughs> scallop going on. Beautiful. Oh, Jane, thank you so much. So if you're going to bind it, yes, you're going to need bias, bias binding. binding. Yeah, no straight edge binding on this, on this so baby. So how are we doing for time? Um, it is 25 past 11. Oh, we're okay then. Yeah. So to do um, biased, continuous bias tape, make your own. I'm going to show you the way that I was taught how to do this. Um, I've got a half metre of fabric here. Now, I can't think off the top of my head how much binding a half metre will make, but it will make you a lot. Enough to do the quilt, anyway. You're going to take your... This is a half metre piece, so I've cut the salvage edges off each end, and I'm going to cut it in half with a 45 degree cut. This is where, you know that lovely long ruler that Creative Grids have just brought out? This is where this would come in really handy. Yes. Where is it? I think it's gone back into the warehouse, hasn't it? Just making sure I'm straight on here so that I've got my 45 degree line along the base of my half metre piece. I'm just going to slide it across because I want... Oh, Elizabeth says Natasha's roll bias binding is lovely to use too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Saves yes. all of this. Saves all of this. Absolutely. And it comes in 50 metre rolls. So, yeah. so you're going to get more <laughs> than enough to, to, to make your quilt. Yep, 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 yep. Low, oh, Low and John are winding each other up with the flange talk. <laughs> you can imagine, can't yes, you, yes, can. yes, you can. Yes, 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 so yes. you're then going to take your two pieces and um, with the 45 degrees in opposite directions. What? What wizardry is this? Hang on, what? We're going to sew down this edge here. Are we? Right sides together if you've got a pattern fabric because of course this means you can use any of your fabric in your stash to make your binding you're not restricted um can you jane yes. controversial question here could you um use two different fabrics um and do make a stripey binding it would make a you know is that what it'd do it'd, i think you'd have two you know it would yeah stripe, alternate yeah. alternate that's yeah. the word nice. yes it would be quite interesting Oh, I kind of feel challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I love how you say this little, this little gem of gold, this little nugget of gold right till the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of, you never know really when to, to do it because it's sort of, it wouldn't make a whole show, would it? But it's... It sort of fitted in with the scalloped yeah, yeah, yeah. edge, making it. So we will press the seam open on this. Yeah, John's intrigued now. He says, are there not going to be a lot of seams on this? He's intrigued. Mm. So press it open. Press, press the... it open. John, I'm intrigued too. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, John Gemma's ignoring you. Absolutely. <laughs> he said, Gemma! She's Long a ruler for Jane. Stat! No, no, I can hear her chatting too in busy. the other room. She's too busy, busy, busy. I've been working hard. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, now you're going to... Now, I use a two and a half inch wide binding strip. So, I am going to mark two and a half inches along here in stripes <laughs> there's the delay chatty jim we can hear your voice i'm processing orders darling um, sorry, <laughs> well, chatting. No, it's, all right, it's sorry. okay oh, we were just saying that yeah. the really long ruler would really help with this oh. process <laughs> it's fine oh uh, <laughs> low says can you uh, please go back jane i had to open the door for my gin delivery <laughs> 
and John says, oh, it's the truck arrived. Honestly, you two, you're terrible. So I'm marking two and a half inch wide because that's the width I like to have my binding. Mm -hmm. If you like yours at two and a quarter or if you like it at two. Whatever, whatever suits you. Whichever is your favourite width. Um, Elizabeth says this is like the Ferrero Rocher at the end of a demo. <laughs> <laughs> those little nuggets of gold because she always forgets how to do this as well I've watched this demo so many times on YouTube's all over the place and I always forget how to do it it's one of those that you know if you can use a straight edge binding you do don't you because you don't want to be faffing around with bias and and it and traditionally we would have had to have cut lots of smaller strips mm. you know you would be cutting on the diagonal and you cut lots of them and you'd have lots of joins and it would be like oof it's just too much oof exactly that just Jane. too oof. much oof however you are going to teach us something fabulous i know this bit's a bit tedious to watch i know that's right but that everyone's chatting about themselves. That's, that's fine. fine. They're it's just fine. ignoring me and just getting on with their day. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, Lowe's got a gin delivery to, to start working our way through for a start. We're now all dreaming of Ferrero Rocher. Yes. Because you're really spoiling us. <laughs> 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 Not one of that. So you can just... I mean, the, the white on the chalk marker of the Soline pencil is perfect for this because you probably can't see it so well on the camera, but it make, it's giving me a, a really good line to see and follow. <laughs> John's asked, uh, wouldn't it be easier maybe just get the fabric that I need on a Wednesday and ask <laughs> Jay to remind you how to make it and then it's done for me? Well, I mean, that would be cheating. And, uh, and to be fair, this will probably bind both those quilts if I'm looking at them rightly. That's a good colour for them both, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would work for both of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. We haven't included binding fabric in your kit. It's, it's just such purely to make the, yeah, the top. And, you know, again, you can then choose whichever one that you would prefer to have. Because you may look at your fabric and find a colour in there that you think, oh, well, actually, I'd quite like to have that bound in this colour. Because there's so many, with that central panel, there's so many fabric colours mm. that you can choose from. Absolutely. <laughs> John says cheating or a good reminder for customers how to make it. I mean, oh, yes, yes, yes. Julia's dreaming of warm, half her windows are out. And it's oh, a beautiful dear. sunny day but freezing. Um, Julia, we're not going to discuss that near Jane because um, Jane has had a slight boiler system scenario mm. which has not made her happy I've had a warm. house for six days with no heating. Oof. But we've got it done now, it's all fixed and it's all working, so we're okay now. Lo says, uh, Jane, if you could just do the usual request of make it, finish it and send it, that yeah, would be great. Sure, but yeah, sure, that's all there, no problem. Yeah, can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret's just feeling smug because she thinks she has sufficient stash of bias binding, thanks Natasha. Well, we, we put the bias binding up. The, what, the last remaining few rolls of bias binding are on a silly, silly, silly price. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. So you will have, you might not get another strip out of this end piece, depending on how wide you use your binding. I don't think I'm oh, going Julia to. hasn't got a boiler either. That. No windows, no boiler. Oh my goodness. Well, you don't just living in a shed, Julia. This is <laughs> Why would you want, why would you do that to yourself? Oh. So I'm just going to trim that bit off. You Hang might on. not be able to do that last, that last strip. We might just be able to, to get away with it on ours. Julia, don't you have very large, particularly fluffy dogs? Well, they'd be Can't good you to just snuggle throw under. another dog on. So you take your piece now, and you've got these stripes, mm. and you offset it. What, so what? What, what, where what? that stripe is there, that first stripe, mm. you're going to line that up with your second line on this side. So you're offsetting it. You're going to ultimately sew these two edges together, these right. two diagonals, which are biased. 
so just take care. So you, you basically have um, a two and a half inch offset. Yes. Okay, got it. Or the width of your... It's very difficult to see it. Well, when you've pinned it, we'll shut up on a close-up up next to the machine. Sort of... It is slightly offset in so much as you pin through the one mark and then through the other. Okay. So it's sort of offset by the full width of the the strip. Excuse me, sneezing in the background. Oh, Lowe's just been sent some Harris Tweed. How exciting. Nice. Little bits or big bits. Can you do like a a cloaky thing? Not a cloaky thing, you know what I mean. Wrap. A wrap, that's the one. <laughs> I will say, bless you. Honestly, don't start, because once I start sneezing, I'm not going to stop. I might just mute myself for a minute, everyone, because I'm just going to keep on. Are you now just matching up the lines? I'm matching again? up the lines as I go just so that I know that I'm in the right place. And you will end up with that extra on the other end. Yeah, John, a patchwork cloaky thing. I mean, it's a technical term, <laughs> John. Clear, right? <laughs> I'm not sure that I said patchwork, but I love that you've added that in. Yeah, why not? Wasn't there a man that you followed on um, TikTok or something, John, that made a whole coat out of patchworky stuff? He, had, he sent it away to somebody to make it for him. He'd made a quilt and he sent the quilt off and the lady made a hoodie top for him. Oh, excuse and me. And there's, there's a young man on TikTok or YouTube that makes lots of clothes out of pat old... He goes to the, what they call them, thrift stores, don't they, in yeah. America? Um, charity Hang on, what shop. Are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. What so are you doing? I am what now are you doing? sewing... Uh, did we want to have a quick close-up at that, just to see how you've pinned all that? Can you see? That's the first line that I drew. And it comes round, and it's there now. Right, got it. So I'm going to sew these two biased edges together to make, in effect, a tube. But with an offset start. But it's offset. Got it. Oh yeah, John said, oh yes, he's very talented. Oh Elizabeth, I just keep on. Uh, I keep on sneezing. Sorry, you don't have to keep sneezing. <laughs> bless, bless you, bless you. Um, Wendy, yes, a patchwork jacket. What a good idea. How warm would that be? And it's very. Oh, um, I think Julia needs one. Very designer at the moment. I think all the designer stores have got these patchwork skirts and mm. things in. Um, with a quarter of an inch seam, do you follow the lines, or do you need to offset for the seam allowances? It's offset. If you. If you poke your pin through, it should it should offset it. Just take care that you don't stretch it. So do you put pin to pin on the line that you've drawn? Yes. Okay. Morning, Sue. So you've got a tube going on. Like that. You can see that? Yep. And you'll press that seam open as well. <laughs> no, you're so demanding. She's Jen, I'm not so keen on the purple. Could you um <coughs> do some for me in a grey blue, please? Okay. <laughs> I'll be right on it, Lou. <laughs> Oh, Elizabeth says, I have a patchwork jacket. My mum bought it for me three years ago. She's proper trendy. Oh, Ooh. lovely. Have we got some? Shops. Shops, scissors. 
Uh, they should be in the middle bit. Right in the middle, in the middle of oh, me, I see the Morrissey bit. Yeah, I see them. And they just nestle. That's it. So now you're going to... Can we do that in the middle so I can see? Yeah. Thank you. I haven't offset mine, but you just then cut through following the line that you've drawn. And because you've offset it, you're just going to keep cutting it in a in a, such a way that it makes <laughs> low. Yes, we are. It's Friday show because it's the um, it's the guest designer takeover, but our guest designer um, has had to delay. So Gemma and I are going to do a double guest designer takeover day on Friday, and we will indeed do the pay it forward thing of which you you speak. <laughs> So you just keep following the line through and you will end up with a continuous piece of fabric that makes a nice amount. Take your time. Take your time to line up your seams. That's the, the key to this. So you just keep going and there you have your bias. That is amazing. So you will fold that over like you would, you treat it then normally like you would do your binding. So I do mine folded in half, attach my raw edges to the edge of my quilt, fold it over and Job then done. behind. If you want to do it into the middle, you can do it that way and bring it over the edge of your quilt and sew down that way. But it's bias now, it's got a stretch to it. So you've got that curve. So when you go around your curves, you can you can do that. So there you go. Perfect. Excellent Ta -da. job. Ta-da! Well done, you. Good job. A marathon <laughs> sprint <laughs> today. I know, I know, I know. We're going to go and sit you in a dark room and yeah. give you a cup of tea or something, yes. coffee. Yeah. Um, thank you so, so much. You're so welcome. That is two different creative grid rulers. Yes. Um, and some sort of some sort of bias binding wizardry yes. that Jane has just whipped out right at the end like a Ferrero if you, Rocher. There's lots on YouTube, continuous bias binding. I know, but that's clever. But it's, it, it is, and it's it's weird, but it's good. But it works. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It's weird and it works. It and works. we like weird that works. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right, everybody, we are going to be back this Friday. Please do not forget. I need to not forget as well. That yes, we're here it's good if you remember. So Gemma is going to show you how to do the donkey sanctuary donkeys. Yes. Uh, that were the Christmas pay it forward ones that we didn't get a chance to show. Yeah. And I am going to show you how to do a syringe driver bag. And Ooh. what they mean is that people can return home um, with a syringe driver to manage pain care, uh, pain management and yes. all that kind of stuff with a syringe driver and it just is there with them yes um uh so that's been a really important thing and that is very very close to a friend of mine's heart and she um she's done so much with all of this it really is quite quite humbling the amount that she's done she's raised an awful lot of money and so we are going to support her with this Lovely. um and that will be the demo on Friday. Lovely. That's going to be a nice show with you and Gemma. That's really nice. Well, I hope so. And yeah. Lo has um, done a little something, a little surprise, a little... You know how the Pay It Forwards were generated off the back of how generous and gorgeous our viewers were? Yes, yeah. Um, and how kind they are um, and continue to be so. You yes. know exactly who you are. Um, and so she would like to, there's a piece of jewellery, I'll give all the details on Friday, that will go into a lucky dip for anyone buying the Pay It Forwards on Friday that lovely. Lo would like to gift. What a lovely thing to do. From a very lovely lady. She's a lovely lady, she is We've got. Lady. Um, we're so lucky with all of our amazing viewers, we really are. So um, that will be on Friday. <laughs> she sent me a message, Tasha, are we doing the Pay It Forward thingy? With the thingy. With the thingy. <laughs> it's all in code. Yes. Um, and we uh, all know what thingy is. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a good thingy. Yes. Um, so that is what will be happening on Friday. Lovely. Um, 
there you go you see that's it claire said my dad had a permanent cannula for his morphine during cancer treatment no, that's just it isn't it yeah. and if you've got a bag that you can carry that around with it means you're a little bit more mobile and life can be slightly more yes. normal yeah if there is such a thing yeah. as normal yeah absolutely so that's that's why it's so important absolutely. Um, and if it just means that people can get home yes and feel independent and feel a so bit more important. in control of their lives that's yeah. the thing isn't it so that's what we will be doing um oh no it's because you support me and all the ladies do too we i mean and by doing that it helps us support others this is the big circle isn't it yes you know i am um, i feel like i'm a woman's woman do you know what I mean? There are yeah. some women that are just that aren't necessarily. No. And and there are some. You that are hugely are. supportive, and you are very much an advocate for supporting other women to be women the best they can. Support about. other women because yeah. the power that we have when we do is immense. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think previously in past times we've been led to believe that we have to be in competition with each yeah. other, and no, I don't no. think. That is at all true. No. And it's like you just said, if we support each other, we are immensely powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Women lifting other women is just immense. Huge. And that's what um, and that's what we do here, amongst other things. Um, so that is in, well, it's very exciting. Yes. It's very exciting. And then so, you're on Craft Store on Sunday? I am on the Craft Store on Sunday. It's 7 and 11. That is an early start for you. I'm going to go it? over and stay because I have oh, to yeah. be there at least an hour before. Oh, yes, you need to do that then, don't so you? So I'm going to go and have a nice and a beautiful hotel and yes. enjoy myself. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. good for you. <laughs> that's, that's what I decided <laughs> yes. and booked it yesterday. I went, at what time? At what get up? No, 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 no. Yeah. Especially when the weather's cold and the roads are icy. Yeah, I'm not that's doing that. it. Yeah, no, look after no, no. yourself. That's the main thing. Um, Pat just says, here, here. Yes, absolutely. That's what we do, ladies. We yeah. lift up and we support. Um, like a fabulous bra. Yes. <laughs> we don't lift them separate. And we all know the great effects <laughs> that can have. <laughs> right. <laughs> on that note, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. Have a Bye. great day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> We're such children. <laughs> <laughs>